Hello grade five, happy Tuesday. Uh, we have another exciting math lesson for today. We're gonna be doing comparing and ordering decimal tenths and hundredths. So in our last lesson, we uh, went over decimal tenths and hundredths, and we were just talking about them, showing how to write them, showing the fractions it represents. Today we're gonna be working on actually comparing them and ordering them, and we'll be doing some stuff where we do this visually, uh, and also do it on a number line. So let's get started on our first slide here. And so we take a look here. We've got a block broken down into hundredths. First question to ask is how many tenths are shaded? So we've done this before with like base 10 blocks. So if you look and you know this is broken into a hundred, hundredths, so a hundred equal pieces, so if you look at each column here, you know that there's going to be 10 of those, and so each one of those columns that is fully shaded is going to represent tenths. So if we look at how many full columns are shaded, that will tell us how many tenths there are. So I look, I can count one, two, three. So that tells me that there are three tenths. So that's what I would write there when I ask how many tenths are shaded. Now if I look at hundredths, I can count all of the blocks because I know there's a hundred of them. But if I do also three times 10, because I have three columns of 10, that tells me that it's going to be 30 hundredths. So if you notice, there's an equal sign here, which is telling us that these are equivalent. They are equal. These are equal fractions. Three tenths equals 30 hundredths. And I think you can kind of see that visually here also just wanted to point out something that we've talked about previously. If you notice the relationship between numerator and denominator, that if you go from here, 3 times 10 is going to equal 30, and then 10 times 10 is going to be equal to 100. So remember that when you're writing equivalent fractions as well, that if you're multiplying the numerator and denominator by a number, you're doing it for both of those. So that is showing 3 tenths equals 30 hundredths. Now let's take a look at this next slide. And it says, how would you write 3 tenths as a decimal? And we just had the fraction, but now we're doing it as a decimal. So if you remember, first we can write our zero, then our decimal point, and then our first value right here is going to be tenths. So it's 3 tenths, so 0 0.3. Next it says, how would you write 30 hundredths as a decimal? Now remember when we're writing hundredths, that's going to be the first two place values to the right of the decimal when we're writing hundredths. So here, just 0 0.30. And listen to how I said that. I said 0 0.30. Keep that in mind, and we'll get that into that a little bit later in the lesson, but that's how you want to say that, 0 0.30. And if you look here, we have our equation written 0 0.3 equals 0 0.30. These are equivalent decimals because they represent the same amount, which is what we showed in that previous slide where you could see that when we had our um, hundredths block. Okay, so let's just move on to the next exercises. So now it's giving us our visual representation in our hundreds, and it says to write two equivalent fractions and two equivalent decimals for the amount shaded. So I'll start with the equivalent fractions. So first, I'm going to look at tenths, and I'm going to do that by counting how many columns are shaded. One, two, three, four, five, because remember, each column has ten squares in each one, so that tells me that's going to be five tenths. Now I need another equivalent fraction. Since we have hundredths here, if I've got five tenths, and each of those are 10, five times 10 is 50, so I know that 50 one hundredths would be an equivalent fraction. Now in the next part it says equivalent decimals as well. So remember, five tenths we write as 0 0.5 which is also going to be equal to, if we're going to write 50 hundredths, 0 
So those are all equivalent, all representing the same amount. Now I have B. Here I see two columns, so two tenths, so two over 10 equals, there are 10 in each, so that's 20, so equals 20 over 100. Now if I'm writing that again as a decimal, two tenths, 0 0.2, which also equals 20 hundredths, which would be 0 0.20. So hopefully that makes sense. So when we're doing our tenths, we count the number of columns, and then how many squares altogether are shaded when we're doing our hundredths. All right, and this was what I was talking about um, a second ago when I was reading that decimal as 0 0.30, or when I was saying 20 hundredths, and I said 0 0.20. So when we have 0 0.7, that's how we read it, 0 0.7. But you notice I did not say like 0 0.30. So it's not correct to say 0 0.70. So each digit after the decimal point, you should be read reading separately. So 0 0.70 is said 0 0.70, not 0.70. Um, and one of the reasons is just to make sure that you realize that 0 0.7 and 0 0.70 are equivalent. So you're not thinking in your head, okay, if I say 70, that's bigger than 7, because those are representing the same amount. So just make sure whenever you're saying the decimals that you say it like that, say each digit separately. So I'll just go through these really quickly. So here we have 0 0.9. 0 0.09, 0 0.90, 0 0.13, 0 0.31, and 0 0.03. So just when you're saying the decimals, make sure that you say each digit separately so that you don't get confused when you start comparing them. So just take a look at this example here, uh, read the numbers aloud and then shade each decimal. So here we've got 0 0.8, which we could say 8 tenths. Also know that that's going to be equivalent to 0 0.80. So that means we're going to shade in eight of these columns. And I'm not going to color it all in, but that would be how we would shade that in. You'll have to do that on your exercises for today. So 0 0.8, that's 8 tenths, that's 80 of the 100 that are shaded in. Now we've got 0 0.12. Now this is where it might get a little bit trickier because in the previous example and all the other ones I showed you, we were just dealing with groups of tenths. But now, if we look at the place values, We've got one tenth here. So that tells me that one column is going to be shaded in. And then here in our hundredths place, we have only two. So that tells me that out of all these hundredths, I'm going to need to shade in two more. So that is how we would shade 0 0.12 or 12 hundredths is another way that you can say that. So there's 12 out of these 100 that are shaded in. And then it asks here which decimal is larger. And even if you weren't sure, if you look at how much is shaded, you can see that 0 0.8 is greater than 0 0.12. So when you're comparing that is a way you can, if you have your visuals there, you can easily see it. But if also, if you look in our tenths place, that eight tenths is going to be greater than one tenth. All right, halfway done with this lesson. Okay, so here we have an example of reading the numbers as decimals. And then 
we'll talk about reading them as hundreds. So if I read them as decimals, 0 0.60, then I've got 0 0.08, and then finally 0 0.3. Um, and the reason why it's asking you here to read these as hundreds is because um, when you are comparing, it's going to be easier if you say the numbers as hundreds to compare these decimals and also when you start putting them onto a number line. So if I'm reading this as hundreds, I've got 60 hundreds, 8 hundreds, and here we don't have the zero. We can add a zero, so we'd say 30 hundredths. And then this way it'd be easier to place on a number line, be easier to compare them. So 60 hundredths, 8 hundredths, and 30 hundredths. So just remember that too. If you see just a tenth, like, if, like in this 0 0.3, you can always add a zero on there to then say that as hundredths rather than saying three-tenths, because remember those are equivalent fractions. So for the next um, one here, we have, and this time I'm going to just say them as hundredths, so we have sixty hundredths, eight hundredths, and thirty-four hundredths. And I'm going to place them all on the number line. So first I'll look at my sixty hundredths. So I look here, this is, remember, going from zero to one. So 60 hundredths, I just have to look for my 60, so I'll put that right there. I'm just going to label that, label these as A, B, and C, so when I put them on the number line. For 8 hundredths, so I'm going to go further to the left, closer to zero, and I know that's going to be 9 hundredths, 8 hundredths, so I'm going to make a mark there, and I'll put my B there, my A. And then finally C, 34 hundredths, and I'm just looking for 30, 0.34 on this, line, this number line that's showing hundredths. So 0.31, 32, 33, 34, there is where I would put C. We've talked about this before when we were talking about fractions and comparing them on number lines. It says, how does the number line show which number is greater? So remember, the further to the right you get on the number line, the bigger the fraction is, the bigger the decimal is going to be. So the closer we get to one, the bigger it is. So if we're writing them in order from least to greatest, first we have B, so we could write, I'll put that down here, 0 0.08 is less than, next we have C, 0 0.34, which is less than 0 0.60. So when you're writing them in order, if you have a number line, it's going to go from left to right. The further to the right the number is on the number line, the bigger it is going to be. Okay, and then here's just a little reminder. When written as a decimal, fractions with a denominator 10 have one digit after the decimal point because that's our tenths place. Fractions with a denominator 100 have two digits after the decimal point. For example, 3 tenths is going to be 0 0.3, but 3 hundredths is going to be 0 0.03. So when we're talking about hundredths, if we're writing it as a decimal, if we have a number less than 10 here, there's going to be a zero in that tenths place. So just remember that, that if you're writing hundredths, you always have to have two numbers to the right of the decimal. If you're writing tenths, it's just one number. All right, so here we have a few exercises. We have five questions where it says to write the fraction that the decimal represents. So I'll look at A, and I can read that 0.4, Another way I can read that is four tenths. So I know that I'm going to have four as my numerator, and since it's tenths, ten as my denominator. B, I've got a four in here, but notice the zero in the tenths place, so that'd be four hundredths. So four, again, is my numerator, but now, since I'm talking about hundredths, hundred is going to be my denominator. C, 24 hundredths. 
So 24 is the numerator, 100 is the denominator. If you notice when you're converting a decimal into a fraction, your numerator is always going to be what is here. So here we've got 5 tenths. There's my numerator. Just make sure then, since this is tenths in the tenth place, that you get your denominator correct. So it's 5 tenths. And then finally, E, 87 hundredths. So 87 is my numerator. And since it is hundredths, 100 will again be the denominator. So that is how you do that. Just be careful that you're either that you're getting that denominator correct. The numerator is always going to be whatever numbers to the right of the decimal. Okay. Now this is what when we were talking about saying things as hundredths, that it's a lot easier to compare decimals because it's hard to compare four tenths and thirty-eight hundredths because of the fact that tenths are bigger than hundredths. So this is what we were saying before. How many hundredths is four tenths equal to? So remember that if I have just the tenths, I can put a zero to tell me how many hundredths it's going to be. So 40 hundredths as compared to 38 hundredths. It asks us the question, is it easier to compare 40 hundredths to 38 hundredths, and why? And if you think about it, how that would look if we had a hundred hundredths square here, that if we had 40 of them cut, uh, shaded in compared to 38, we know that 40 hundredths is going to be greater than 38 hundredths. So 4 tenths is greater than 38 hundredths because 40 hundredths is greater than 38 hundredths. So if you're comparing two decimals too and you have the same amount of num numbers to the right of the decimal point, then you're just looking at what number is bigger. So 40 would be bigger than 38, so 40 hundredths is going to be greater than 38 hundredths. All right, so we have one more set of three exercises to go over. Write both decimals as hundredths, then compare them. So A, I've got 3 tenths and 25 hundredths. So one of them's already in hundredths, but we want to write this one as, as hundredths. So remember, I can just add a zero. So 0 0.30, 0, 30 hundredths. Then I've got 25 hundredths, 0 0.25. If I look at these two, 30 is greater than 25. So 30 hundredths is going to be greater than 25 hundredths. Here I've got 5 hundredths, so 0 0.05, and then here, 4 tenths, if I write that as hundredths, 0 0.40, 40 hundredths, and then if I want to compare those, 5 hundredths is less than 40 hundredths. And finally, I've got 76 hundredths. And my six tenths, I'm going to write as 60 hundredths. And by comparing those two, 76, 76, 76 hundredths is going to be greater than 60 hundredths. So we put our greater than sign right there. Um, hopefully, everyone feels pretty good about this. You'll be placing these on number lines, doing some comparing on your exercises. If you have any questions, have any trouble, please feel free to join us on Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, myself and Madame Donald will be available to answer any math questions. Go over some of these exercises if you would like, even if you just want to check the work you did, because that's what I did uh, yes, the other day when I was uh, working with the group, is we just went over, made sure everyone understood it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to join us on Thursday at 1 p.m. Um, that's it for today. I hope that everyone has a great Tuesday and um, has a chance to get outside and enjoy some fresh air. Have a wonderful day.